Hello there Nerf fans, this is John with Containment Crew, and today I'm going to be popping open the Mega Magnus, because a lot of people, uh, a lot of people have been uh, asking about this one, so I want to show what's going on. I know there are other videos and write-ups on what's going on exactly in this blaster already. I haven't looked through them, so this is really my first time with this. I opened it up to take a quick look at it and figure out how some of the mechanisms work in here. But uh, overall, this is my first time seeing it. I haven't previously looked into this. Before starting, I just want to make a couple of notes on this when taking it apart. The, it, there, in the back of the blaster here, there is a much longer screw than any of the others. And when you pop this open, you kind of have to pry it up and bend it out. And there's one screw right in here, hiding under the... Uh, under the slide back here. Once you get the blaster open you can actually pop this half of the slide off and I'm gonna bring this up here and there's just a little clip in the front here that holds it into the track but other than that this this part of the slide does come off the blaster so we're gonna set that aside because there's nothing special about that and then now we start to be able to get a slightly better look at this and we can take a quick look in there and we can see the actual real plunger tube this one that we mentioned I'm sorry my my viewfinder is actually upside down at the moment but this uh, this part here that we were seeing before is actually a retention system for the plunger tube not the actual plunger tube so the actual real plunger tube which is back here and does run the full length of this is actually a little bit more narrow but I'm gonna put this back down on the table and then pry the casing off and we pop this out and there is nothing going on on this side of the shell the only thing of note on this part of the shell is that there are two little springs here and they are they do seem to be glued into place and these operate the uh, the retention doors for the internal magazine okay so let's see where do we start talking about this first of all let's clear up some things the uh, the little door here for the internal magazine just slides out like that. There's nothing really holding it in place other than, you know, the, the shell being together. So this part can come off and we can just put it aside for now. The magazine slider, it's just the spring is held in on a little post in the bottom and this part comes right out. There's really not too much to it. If you want to get the spring off, there's just a little screw sitting down in there holding the spring on. But we'll put him aside. And now we start to look at the actual workings of this. Okay, so again, I have to apologize. My viewfinder is upside down right at the right at the moment. So I'm um, taking a quick look at the actual blaster itself. Uh, the first thing we've got this little pin here that is visible from the outside of the blaster. Um, I think I think Charles made a note on this that we weren't sure what this was for. Um, and I'm still not entirely sure. The only thing that it seems to operate is this little piece in here. I guess it's some sort of unlock or... I don't know. It doesn't really seem to have a function. I'll probably figure it out somewhere through this. But the actual main mechanism of this whole thing... We've got on the front here the back half of the slide, which without a lot of unscrewing the this half of the slide does not come off without without a lot of unscrewing under the plunger tube but this is the main post here that drives the whole thing and if we pull this unit out this whole thing just pops out and we just gotta work it around the catch we pull this out and we see this nice huge spring that's in there fairly stiff rather thin might be kind of hard to find a replacement, but I think I've seen some in the hardware store. I'll have to uh, I'll have to take a look around and see if there's a see if there's any other springs that work in this. But there's the spring, and let's first talk about the plunger tube. So this whole system, and hopefully hopefully the lighting shows it, but they're on this front piece that pushes the plunger back, and like I theorized on looking at it uh, the first time, this does seem to work very similar to how the long shot works, where it's got the piece, the uh, the barrel actually moves into the plunger tube and has a seal at the front. 
So this pushes back and the whole thing actually continues to slide back even more and there's a return spring on it so I'm guessing this actually has to come back a little bit farther to hit the catch that would be my assumption on this or there's just a little bit extra play in there because I don't know maybe they've found some jamming issue that if it doesn't if it didn't have a little bit more room to get over the catch it sometimes didn't catch or something that would be my theory on it and then it slides back up and the first thing you probably notice is with this being back like that is there's actually no plunger rod so we'll try to get that in there as you can see down in there there is just a little plunger head cap and that's all it is and it slides pretty freely in there and hopefully the camera will pick this up but there are two dark rings in there which are obviously two o-rings so the seal doesn't seem to be that great on this, but I can't really get this open at the moment. The back of this is actually capped off and sealed with some sort of solvent weld. It doesn't seem to want to come open. They really didn't want you to get this open. Um, this retention plate here actually pops off. There's a little clip in here. It just hops over this and then you just have to take the spring to get this out of here. But there doesn't seem to be any way of getting this open without cutting the actual plunger tube. So until I'm ready to actually do something with this, I'm going to leave it intact. Um, looking down, down here, it seems to be the air restrictor is just a very large version of designs that we've already seen before. There doesn't seem to be anything special about it. Um, I'm guessing the only way to really access that would be to get this apart. And again, it looks like it's solvent welded together. So they've really done a lot of work to not let you in here. But if we ever do get this open, getting the back cap off and then splitting this somehow, it should come apart very similar to how the long shot, long shot comes apart when you actually take it apart and work on it. But that's pretty much it for that. There is a hole in the back of the plunger tube. This is for the catch. This is not an air release hole or anything. The plunger head never comes back that far. So this is for the catch point on the, uh, the plunger head, which you can see right here. This is, this is the catch point here. That's where we catch and then it can freely move. Okay. Now the actual little mechanisms that are in this side of the shell. We have this little red bar here. This is actually the, uh, this is a trigger lock to prevent you from pulling the trigger. The part that closes this is actually on this half of the slide. When this is in place, I'm just going to pop this back on temporarily. This is in place, the whole thing slides forward, it pushes this down, and then you can pull the trigger. But as we can see, things are a little out of alignment because it's not screwed together, but when that's in place, we can now pull the trigger. And that's very tight at the back there. The trigger itself is just very simple. We've got the trigger, it's got its own return spring. And under here is just where it meets up with the catch and pushes the catch down. Very simple, very simple standard catch. The only thing going on here is that it's in this retention plate. Um, this, ignoring this weird thing that I'm not exactly sure what it does, this part back here, and I'm going to tilt this and bring it up in here, this is a two-stage uh, priming check. When, where is it? On the plunger tube. It's on the plunger tube, isn't it? Or is it? No, it's on the. Um, it's actually on the slide. So we'll, we're going to bring the slide through and hopefully get a good angle to watch this work. So the slide comes through. You can see this orange bit coming through. It pushes that down, and this is half prime. So this is basically saying, "Hi, I'm going to be priming. So finish priming me, or I'm not going to let you close up." Then we continue through, and there's a larger bit that comes through and pops that completely down so that now we're in the prime position we come back forward so we can move freely forward everybody goes through we see this little gray bit coming up and it hits this orange plate in the front and then pop and there we go so that that whole switch system is reset behind this this uh, was that that's the back side of the uh, the internal magazine 
we've got the uh, we've got this orange part on the slide also comes up and uh, we can probably see them it actually move but it pushes the uh, it's just a very simple we've all seen the uh, the load doors on these before I'm not sure if I can get an angle on this that's the only problem here so you can see it come up and it pushes and just a very simple uh, load door to make sure the uh, the dart is pushed all the way down the barrel before it opens up and clears the path. But overall, we have a much simpler blaster than the Centaurian was. Um, I'm gonna pop the plunger tube back in here without the spring because I wanna I wanna move this mechanism around a bit and see if I can figure out what that what that little orange button is actually for. And again, the front of the plunger tube feeds into this hole up on the back side of the slide. And the plunger tube actually clicks down into place. You know you got it back in when it clicks. So. There is a part on the plunger tube. The angles are the problem, but there is a little part on the plunger tube that actually... Uh, meets up with this uh, this orange mech here. So when we go ahead and bring this bring the prime back, I want to see if anything happens, but I'm having trouble keeping it in the camera. Um, does anything actually happen? Oh, that actually does change the position on that. And then. That feeds all the way up, so that's back in place, and then we'll have to pop the catch and see if anything happens. But there's no spring in there. Okay, so, hmm, what does this little thing actually do? Hmm, I'm going to play around with this, and I'll... I'll be back if I figure out what this actually does, because it seems to be related related to that little extra bit of mo uh, play and movement that the plunger tube has. All right, so I'm gonna come back with this now, and I actually put it back together for a little bit to try to figure out what this actually does, and I'm I'm kind of stumped at this as to what it actually is. It looks like there's some sort of catch point on it. Yeah, there's, there's some sort of catch point on it, there's a hump, there's a part on it that meets up with the plunger tube. But, for the life of me, I can't actually figure out what it does. Um, there doesn't seem to be any way for the lip on the plunger tube to come forward and catch in there or anything, but... I don't know, I just don't know what it is. But overall, this thing, as we have shown here, is much, much simpler than what the Centurion is. Um, if I can ever get this open without destroying it, I see a lot more potential to this. It should be much easier to work on. Uh, and, um, I'm not really sure what else to say about it. There's a, there's a nice amount of air volume in the plunger. Um, the seals seem okay. They're a little on the loose side, but I think that was intentional in order to allow some air to escape around them, because this thing could actually be in the range of being dangerous if uh, it had perfect seals on it. Um, this, uh, make sure we get this Magdor piece back in and the slide for this. Okay, we're in the tracks for that. That goes right back in there. The shell goes back on it. Oh, I have to put the spring back in. Don't forget to put your spring back in. So this is all going to come out again. Apply the, apply the plunger tube back up. And I know I said this before that the plunger tube clips in, but the clips that meet up with it are right down along here. And spring in there. Back there. Very strong spring. Make sure we're aligned with those clips and it pops in. Get 
that all back aligned in there. Pop that back on. Oops. Slot that back in. So that slot back in. That's in its tracks. And then we can put the shell back on. This likes to push apart at the front because of the springs in here. So, as long as everybody's moving correctly, yeah, the trigger's not going to work because the trigger lock is on this side. And it's probably best to put this screw back in, then pop this back on, and it should just click right back in. As long as our alignment is correct, and it should snap back in, and then you can get all these screws back together. Just for reference, I didn't break it this time. But there we go. There's a uh, nice little quick overview of what's going on in the Magnus. Uh, yeah, Magnus it is Magnus. Uh, I keep wanting to say Magnum because the damn thing's huge. But, uh, yep, there we go. That's what's going on inside. Um, any questions? Um, I think I put this up on both, my, uh, both our Facebook and I think on the G+, or though I'm not sure if anything actually posts on the G+, I haven't seen any evidence that the posts that I try to make on there actually go up on it. But uh, currently the best way to reach us is through Facebook, uh, with the whole Google integration and G+, thing going on. YouTube comments and replies seem to be getting lost a bit, so um, if you have any questions, Facebook right now really is the best way to get in touch with us. But uh, I hope you guys learned a little something. I am very happy to see that this is not nearly as complex as the Centurion. I'm a little disappointed that the plunger tube sealed so well as far as not being able to get it open and that the actual air seals in it aren't as good as I was hoping. But uh, there we have it. That's the Magnus. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching and we'll see you again sometime soon with something new.